Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to go through a tutorial to create some awesome, super satisfying 3D blocks, cube smashing scenes using Blender, the free and open source software that's awesome, it's amazing that anybody can use. Now these scenes can be as simple or as complex as you like. You can have a simple cube full of little cubes that get smashed, or you can make a more complicated, super awesome physics simulation. For this video, we're just going to keep it nice and simple for the beginner. This is super easy to replicate in Blender, so let's jump straight in. Here we are in a brand new scene in Blender. As you can see, I'm using Blender 3.6.1, which is the latest release as I'm making this video. By the time you're watching this, there might be a later version, so just use that one, and it's probably mostly the same. So we're just going to click on General here, just to start a new file. Just going to hit A on my keyboard, and then X, and click Delete, just to delete everything in the scene. As you can see, down in the bottom left here, I've got screencast keys on. So if there's anything that you miss or I forget to say, you can see exactly what I've hit down here. That might help you understand. So to start off the scene, we're going to need a base that all our blocks are going to sit on. So for that, I'm just going to use a plane. So we'll just go Shift A, Mesh, Plane, and there we go. So there's our plane there. I'm going to scale it up by printing S and just dragging it up. That looks pretty good there. So to add our first cube, we're just going to hit Shift A again and then just add a cube. Just going to scale this down, put it on top of the plane. Just like that and this is going to be the corner cube so we want to put it sort of in the corner of where the rest are going to be so we'll just move it around using g and then the key of the axis that you're going to move it on that looks pretty good there if you want you can make it smaller or bigger it's up to you and then we're going to come over to the side here and hit the wrench here which is the modifiers tab add modifier and we're going to get an array modifier now for our offset here, we need to set this to 1.001 .001, just to give it a tiny little gap in between the two objects as you can see just there. This is just to help the rigid body simulation. So after that, we're just going to increase the count. I'm going to do 10 for this tutorial. Just going to move it over, G, X, there we go. And that's our first row of blocks there. So I'm just going to duplicate this. We're going to switch this to the Y and change that to zero. So there we go, there's the base. And then do the same thing for the Z. So there's our cubes. I'm just going to hit G, X, sorry, G, Y and just move it over so it's in the middle a little bit more. That looks a bit better there. Now, depending on your system, you might want to have more or less cubes. So generally, if you have more, it looks better, it looks cool or whatever. But the more you have, the more calculations your computer is going to have to do to calculate the physics. And if you don't have a very powerful computer, this can crash Blender or freeze Blender and it can take a long time for it to process. So I'm just going to do 10 here, but you can play around and see what works best for you before moving on. Okay, so now that we've got all of our blocks, we need to separate them because as you can see, they're all still one big shape. So to do that, I'm just going to go over here and just apply each of these modifiers. So just apply, otherwise you can just hit Control A while you're hovering over the modifier there. So those are applied now. So if we hit tab to so go into edit mode, you can see that each of these blocks is its own little section now. So I'm going to hit A to select all of them, right click, go down here to separate and then buy loose parts. Now this might take a second if your computer is not very powerful just to split everything up depending on how many blocks you have. But now as you can see, they're all separate little entities. We can move them around freely. Now one other thing we need to do just to help get the blocks sorted is change their origin points. So at the moment, they're all set to this one origin here. So if I move this, I can, you can see that the origin point's moving. So we just need to hit A to select everything in the scene. You can deselect the plane if you like. It doesn't really matter too much. And I'm just going to hit right click, set origin and origin to geometry. And as you can see, each little cube now has its own origin in the middle of the cube. And that'll help the physics simulation to work properly. Okay, so now that our blocks and our plane are just about good to go, we need something that's going to hit these things. So for this simulation, I'm just going to use a ball, which is just going to be a UV sphere. There's a lot of other different things that you could use to crash into it. You could try and make like a bat or maybe like a wrecking ball and that sort of stuff. But I'm just going to use a sphere for this just to keep it nice and simple. So we're just going to move it out over here. Just going to shade it smooth. There we go. Grab it on the Z, move it up there. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, so our ball's going to hit this here and it's all going to explode basically. So 
we need to start applying some physics to the simulation so that something actually happens. If you see, if I hit play now, nothing's going to happen because there's nothing that's assigned. I'm just going to make the plane just a solid object down here just so that the cubes are sitting on something. So we're going to go to the physics tab here. It looks, looks like a little planet. And we're just going to go rigid body. And we need to switch the type to passive. If you leave it as active, the plane's just going to fall. Setting it as passive sort of locks it into place and it won't fall. The rest of these settings are all fine. We can just leave them as default. Just going to do the ball next because it's quite easy. We're going to go rigid body. This is going to be active as well. We're going to come back to these settings in a little bit. Now it can be a little bit tricky to apply the same setting to all the cubes, but there is a little hack to get it done. So we're just going to select one of them here. Rigid body. It's going to be active. You can change the mass if you like. It just changes the way the simulation behaves depending on how much each of the blocks weigh. I'm just going to leave it as one kilogram default. From there, we need to just select all the cubes. So I'm just going to hit A to select everything. Holding shift, we're going to deselect that, deselect that. And then we need to hold shift again and hit the cube that we apply the rigid body physics to. And as you can see, it becomes sort of a lighter orange highlight there. That means it's the active object. So then we can come up the top here to object. Go down to rigid body and copy from active. And that will apply the same settings that we've put on this block here to each of them. And they all have their own physics simulation properties now. So now if we hit play, it's going to run quite slowly as it starts to calculate the simulation. Nothing's really going to happen except the ball that's going to fall down because we haven't animated that in yet. So let's do that now. So the ball's going to start here and it's going to end up somewhere over here after it's crashed through all the blocks. So to do that, we need to animate it using keyframes. So what we're going to do, we've just got the ball selected. I'm just going to hit I and apply a location keyframe. So after we've got that keyframe there, there's another thing that we need to do just to allow us to animate this using the keyframe system down here. We just need to come over here and check this box here that says animated. So there we go. Now we can go to about frame 20 and move the ball to where we want it to be after it's crashed through everything about there. And we'll hit I, location, to add another keyframe. So now you want to make sure you've got your file saved. And I'm just going to change the end frame here to something maybe like, uh, we'll start with 80 for now, just so that we don't have to spend so much time baking physics. So we're just going to hit play on the spacebar there. It's going to run through depending on your system and how powerful it is. And there we go. So the first time after it's run through, it'll run pretty smooth after that. So you'll be able to see it properly. So we've got our ball traveling towards the cubes here. We go everywhere. That looks pretty cool. So there is one problem with this, which is the ball that just hangs there after it's crashed through everything. So there is a way that we can fix that with the keyframes as well. And it's got to do with this animated box that we checked earlier. So we're going to go up to frame 19 here. And I'm going to hit this little circle thing next to the animated checkbox and that will assign it a keyframe so as you can see it's got a little keyframe down here on the timeline and then we're going to go one keyframe ahead i'm going to uncheck that and add another keyframe there so now when we recalculate the physics you can see the ball loses its sort of animation status it just becomes a normal rigid body and it falls down as it normally would so you can play around with this if you want if you want a bigger base you can do that if you wanted to Maybe have like a bat or something that crashes all the cubes instead of a ball. You could add that in as well. It's just the same principle with the rigid body physics. Okay, so now we've got our physics simulation. It looks pretty cool. Uh, we need to apply some materials to make this look good. So I'm going to head to the shading tab up the top here. And I'm going to start with the floor. So we're just going to go new for a new material here. It's going to give it a name. So I'm not going to go in too much into detail with the materials here. You can check out other videos on YouTube and that sort of stuff to work out what sort of materials you wanted to use. Um, so I'm just going to assign this just a basic dark color. And we're just going to go into rendered view here quickly. I'll just set up my render settings. We're going to go to cycles. If you've got a GPU, just hit that one there. And I'm just going to get a bit of world lighting just while we sort this out. There we go. So I'm going to turn up the metallic a little bit just so we have like a cool metally looking surface. Turn the roughness down as well. The rest of that looks okay. It doesn't matter too much. Um, for our ball, I'm actually going to use a metal texture for this. So we're just going to call it, it doesn't matter too much how the ball looks. Um, 
I'm not going to be doing any crazy sort of camera angles or close-ups or anything that you'll you'll really need to see the detail for. So that's okay as it is. Now we're going to assign some materials to the blocks. So if you want, you can just do the same thing we did with the floor here and just make a simple texture using Blender's built-in node system. I am going to use another principal texture setup. So I'm just going to go new. So I'm just going to use this marble texture that I've got here. And there we go. So that's assigned it to just the one block there, but we want to put this texture on all of the cubes. So I'm just going to hit A for everything. We're going to deselect that, deselect that. And we just need to make this one here active. So we're going to hold shift and click that again. We're going to go up the top here to object, link, transfer data, and then link materials. So there we go. It's assigned it to each of them. It does look a little bit funky just because it's repeating the same sort of alignment on each block over and over again. So to fix this sort of weird tiling issue here, I'm just going to add a new node. So we're going to go Shift A to search and object, object info. There we go. I'm just going to connect the random value here to the location and the rotation of the texture there. It does look a little bit strange. If you really wanted to go in depth with the texturing, you could spend a lot of time you know, customizing the texture and optimizing it for this sort of setup. For me, I don't mind too much, so I'm just going to leave it as this. This looks fine. So this is pretty much finished now. Um, we basically just have to render it out and then we're done. So now I'm just going to set up the lighting and that sort of stuff a little bit. If you wanted to, you could use an HDRI to surround the, to surround the scene and give you some more natural light. I'm just going to set up my own lighting here just because it's easy to do and doesn't take too long. So for this, I'm actually going to turn off the world lighting. So we're going to go to this little tab on the side here and we're just going to pull the strength all the way down to zero. When we go into rendered mode here, everything's dark. Um, if you haven't already, you want to set your render engine to cycles. And if you've got a GPU, set that to GPU compute. So for our first light, I'm just going to add a standard area light. So just shift A, turn to light here. This area, we're just going to hit G on the Z axis. And we're going to scale that one up. And then I'm just going to go to the lighting tab on the side here. And we're just going to do maybe like something like that. So I'm just going to add another light here. So I've just got a few area lights set up. We've got a big one up on the top here. And then there's one in each corner of the cube. So we've just got our lights around here. It's good to use your own lights and not depend too much on the world lighting, especially as you get into more complex projects. So now we just need to add a camera to our scene. So I'm going to go Shift A, camera. And then if you've got a numpad, uh, if you just hit Control, Alt, and then zero on the numpad, it'll snap the camera to your current view. So we're just going to find a view that looks pretty nice. So I'm just going to go back to viewport shading mode just so we can try and find a nice camera angle. Um, it's quite a big explosion. So something like that might be might be nice. So we'll just go back to frame one, control alt zero, and there we go. So it snapped it to our view there. It's a really nice shortcut. So remember, um, Blender has a lot of useful useful shortcuts, and they they can be quite confusing sometimes. So this is a good one that I would recommend trying to get your head around. Um, so now that we've got our camera set up, I'm just going to have a look at the render settings quickly. If you want to preview your scene without all these like lighting sort of handles and that sort of stuff in the way you can go up the top here hit that to hide the overlays and this will hide anything else that's in the scene so this is what our render is basically going to look like i'm just going to add a little bit of world lighting back so that it's not completely dark there we go um, you can change the color as well if you like but i'm just going to leave it as default so i'm just going to increase our frames from 80 back up to 100 so just down in the box down the bottom here and that'll just give the simulation a little bit longer just for all the blocks to settle and fall off and all that sort of stuff. Now, depending on your computer, if you wanted to keep going, I might actually switch this up to 200. Um, if you don't mind waiting a little bit longer for your project to render, you can set this to as long as you like. It'll just give you a longer video at the end, but it will take longer for it to render. So 200 looks pretty good there with the simulation. I'm just going to have a look, quick look at the render settings and see how we're going over here. So as I said earlier, cycles, GPU compute, that's all good there. Most of these settings are pretty fine by default. We're just going to leave the sampling as it is there. If your computer is not very powerful, one of the easiest things that you can do to reduce your render times is to turn the light bounces down. So this is under the light path section in the render settings on the side here with the little camera. So you can set this to maybe something like four. 
if you go much slower, it doesn't update in here, but if you go lower than three or so, then it, it can start to look a bit nasty. Um, but for scenes like this where you don't really need your reflections, you've got those directional lights shining right onto your objects, the light bounces don't matter too much. If you had like a scene that's lit by an outdoor HDRI or an outdoor light and it's sort of filtering in through the windows and you're relying on all those reflections and the light bouncing off the different objects, then it's important to keep this up nice and high just so that you get as much light as possible. But for a scene like this, it doesn't matter too much and it does save your render time quite a bit. The rest of this is pretty okay. I'm just gonna add a little bit of motion blur. This is all fine just as it is. We'll just leave that like that. Then we'll just go over to the output tab here. This is all pretty fine. You can just leave it as it is. You just need to make sure that your frame range is set to 200. It should update from whatever you set down here, but just make sure that it's the same there. And then for our render, we're just going to bake the physics simulation. It is already done once you've played the video through, it bakes it into the timeline here, but we're just gonna do it into the cache properly, just so that the render doesn't take as long as it doesn't have to sort of update its own calculations as it goes. So we're just gonna to go to the scene properties on the side here in this little tab here. Under rigid body worlds, I'm gonna open the cache submenu there. Make sure this is the same value as you've got down here. And then we're just gonna hit bake all dynamics. Depending on your computer, this could take a while. So maybe go and grab a coffee or something. So there we go, our physics are fully baked. So now it'll just play through nice and smoothly without any buffering or that sort of stuff. So another thing that I like to do when I am rendering things out is set the output folder so it doesn't just dump it into the TMP folder. I like to have it somewhere where it's it's not going to be overwritten by other renders or anything like that. So I'm just going to change this directory. So there we go. We're going to export as PNGs. I'm just going to go up the top here. After that, once you're ready to render, you want to hit Control S just to save everything out, just in case anything happens. Hit Render and Render Animation, and it'll start rendering out the frames. Now, as I said earlier, depending on your computer, this could take a while as well. So it's probably best just to go and do something while this is rendering and come back to it once it's finished. Okay, so now that our render has finished, if you go to that directory that you set earlier where it was saving your frames, you should see a lot of images um, that are all named sequentially. And this is, this is your animation. So what we need to do is put all of this back into Blender and then we need to condense it all into one file. As you can see, as I play through here, this is basically our animation just the individual frames. So I'm gonna put all of this back into Blender and then we'll condense it and export it as an MP4 video. So you just wanna make sure that you've saved your file that we used earlier to make the original simulation and then just head up the top here, go file, new, and we'll just open a video editing Blender file. So this is what you should see when you open it up. We just wanna go down here into the sequencer here and just hit shift A and then we'll go down to image slash sequence. And the little file explorer that pops up, you just wanna to navigate to where you saved your scenes for the video. Then we'll just hit A to select them all and click add image strip. So there we go. We can see all the frames have been added into the video timeline down here. So if you hit the space bar, you should see it play through just up in the viewport here. There we go. Awesome. So as you can see, it does keep going after the video ends. So to fix that, we've just got to go to the output settings at the top here and change the end frame to either 200 or what you had earlier when you rendered out the frames. Basically, we just want to make sure that the rest of this all matches the settings that we had in the original file. So if you rendered at a different frame rate to the default, just switch it over here. Same with the resolution and the aspect ratio. The output setting here is where it's going to put the MP4 file that it saves from your video. So just choose somewhere sensible for that to go. So once you've got that all sorted, just come up the top here, hit render and render animation. Now don't worry, this isn't gonna take ages just like the last one did. It's basically just compiling all the different clips together. So it should only take maybe three minutes or so max. But as you can see, it's going really quickly. And as soon as this is done, we'll be able to watch our new render. So there we go. Now I can just go to my file explorer. We'll just navigate to where we chose to save that file earlier. As you can see, it's saved out here. And if you double click on that, there we go. So that's our finished animation saved as an MP4 file that's ready for you to save, to share, to export, whatever you want to do with it. It's good to go just as a normal video. I think we're going to leave it at that today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed today's video. If there's anything that you had problems with or that didn't work, please just leave a comment down below and I'll try and answer it and help you guys out. I would love to make more Blender content in the future, so if there's any suggestions that you guys have, please leave them in the comments down there as well. And once again, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.